be occupied generally. Well, let's, um, let me ask you, I do have a, a second question I ask people um, that I've been in, that I do enjoy uh, what people say. And um, that question is, how do you, actually, before I ask that question, let me just, this is totally like bugging me in my brain that I haven't checked something here. So I'm gonna do that real quick. You took a drink of water, so I'm gonna check. Cool. There it is. And I'm gonna drag this over to there and take that. Love that picture. <laughs> that goes away. All right, so just in case somebody jumps into our meeting, they will show up behind us. Oh, they manage participants. Rose, Rosanna is in there. Um, so if someone dropped into our meeting, Rosanna or Ros Rosanna, you're welcome to um, show your video or unmute and say hello if you want, just because it's fun. Um, or you can just sit in the, uh, the meeting. Let me see, is there a chat window? Okay. This is a little awkward, but you know. All right. So someone did come in, and we can, as I said, we can take up to 50 people in this room, and it would really change our conversation. But as it is, with, I, with 50 people sitting over our shoulder, that would change the conversation. That would, yeah. So we'd have 50 we'd have people here, but we have infinite people potentially oh, that's here. Right, that's right. You know, and Sherry, sure, hi guys. I'm totally curious, but I've got to go. Hey, few people, Doro. Taylor. Hi everyone that jumped in. Okay, so eventually this is going to get really complicated when this show gets uh, gets popular, which it's sure to. <laughs> so I'm just gonna keep, I'm gonna stay focused on you now. Right on. We're gonna continue this conversation and we'll see what happens. Okay. Okay, so here's the question. How do you respond to um, power when someone tries to use power over you? they raise their voice or do other sort of um, other things that are expressions of trying to use power to move you in a certain direction. Uh, I don't know that I experience a whole lot of that besides uh, you know someone raising their voice and um, you know, I'm certainly able to still be triggered by something like that, but for the most part, I've gotten very much to where when I see someone raising their voice, that doesn't, you know, it, it, it I almost am grateful uh, because I'd rather have someone communicating in a way that's difficult for me, if it is, uh, than not communicating or communicating something that's not entirely true for them. That they're not, I'm, not, I'm not getting the whole picture. So if they're raising their voice, then it, I, I, I'm grateful that you know that they're willing to keep expressing themselves, and and it, I become very curious about what's driving that much energy. Um, so I guess I guess that and in terms of raising your voice, I don't know if even if, if I see that as using trying to use power over me, uh, but and then I'm trying to think of other situations where people try to use power over me, but. Uh, I generally resist. <laughs> <laughs> you resist? Well, sure. I mean, I, I want there to be a balance. So when there's coercion, you know, uh, unless it's unless it's something that I'm already familiar with them and what's involved, and I'm going, okay, yeah, that's fine. But I don't think I, I, don't think I experience it that much. Hmm. I didn't experience it a lot before I became a politician and before I lived in community. <laughs> huh. uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it depends on what kind of uh, the stakes of the context in which you're with people. You know, if you're in a lifeboat with people and you know, it's like everyone's feeling pressure, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. enormous pressure, that's really personal. I guess they tend to, you know, emotions tend to spike more. Um, that's at least for the community side. And in the political side, uh, there's all sorts of crazy pressures in the political world. Um, and, uh, Do you have any examples of what you've experienced? Would you be one to... to so maybe um, just even a, just a generic sort of... Uh, yeah, I mean, I've had, I've had people um, 
I, ha I had a person come up to me after a political meeting um, and I was sitting in a chair and they came up and they were standing over me and they were looking down and they were they were raising their voice and they were um, saying what I was doing in the meeting was inappropriate and um, it was it was very you know it was very like it was such a it was, and that was like that really sticks out for me because it was one of it was really early in my political career and it was a very new experience for me it's like wow this is how apparently this person um, uh, treats people gets people to do <laughs> what they want I guess and um, but in that you know but it, that was like I guess that's why I asked that question because I did not you know what I learned and started to learn there is that I really uh, soften when someone raises their intensity oh really yeah because it's like I mean one a part of me is just like a big part of me is just looking at them saying are you serious you're really gonna like raise your voice at me it's like it's so absurd and um, uh, as in, as in uh, unnecessary, or or not lack of respect, or what? What when you say absurd? I just wonder what what the. Um. It just like it seems to me. Um. Well, it just it, I guess it really just seems sort of juvenile to me. It's just not how, you know, a mature adult human being speaks to another mature adult human mm -hmm, being. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's very much, it's like sports. It's like you're bringing a, something I would, would experience in a sporting event, like a basketball game where someone's like, you know, when I play sports, I might be like, ah, you know, but in talking to someone, right. I'm not going to bring that aggressiveness and that strength to try to get someone to do something right I do you think that's what he was trying he or she was trying to do get mm -hmm. you to do something yeah get you to do something to, to, to do differently in the meeting yeah yeah I mean clearly it was and I just was he telling you what to do he or she telling you what to do or just saying that was inappropriate and, and that kind of um, yeah inappropriate and uh, trying to get me not to uh, do it ever again It is, it, that's really interesting. I, I guess I, I hadn't necessarily equated the raising of the voice and the, and the you know, saying well, this is inappropriate, don't do it next time and all that as being, a, as being an attempt at power over. No? No. I, 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 and, and, well, my question was, did you remain seated? Mm -hmm. You did. So I, I think when that kind of thing has happened to me, I will, I will stand up. Like I, I don't like uneven. And I'm I'm taller than most people. Yeah. And if I'm just standing next to someone who's not as tall as I am, I'm uncomfortable at the at the almost like the like you said the power differential or the height differential. So I will do things to to figure out how to be more on their level. And if it's the other way around, I don't like it either. So if I was sitting there and someone started, you know, I think I would pretty quickly want to stand up and be not to try to you know like whoa oh, look at me you know but just more to, to level out. Yeah. Um, well, the other thing is eye contact. You know, if someone is confronting you, just if you're willing to just look them in the eye, right. I mean, you're definitely saying, I'm here, yeah. I'm listening to you, I'm, looking at you. I'm not afraid of you. If, right. that, if a part of you is trying to trigger fear in me, it, you know, I mean, I mean, actually, it was triggering emotions. I mean, I was, and but... Uh, Anxiety. I just, I just call it like, it just like... The, I just call it emotion. It's just like it just like builds up, and it's like is it like defensive? Is it? Uh, are you in? It's an it's like an anxiety uh -huh, fear uh -huh, type emotion uh -huh, that comes uh -huh. up when intense moments like that. Yeah, yeah. And if it's on the political stage, I mean, you're, if it's sometimes it's in a meeting. I mean, there have been uh, moments in meetings, just like you describe, where uh, another commissioner is really coming after me, like um, over something. Uh, like there's been a lot of controversy over the recording of these meetings because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I believe they should be recorded and I make sure they are recorded. And so um, at the end of one of these meetings, which was kind of a fairly 
it was kind of a long meeting. It was kind of boring. And so I was like sitting back in my chair and just sort of like listening or on. But at the end of the meeting, this other commissioner had been saving up something and he was like, I need to say something. And, you know, I had to like, you know, uh, say something across the table to me. And in that case, I did like, oh, we're going to have something. I'm going to sit up and, you know, look at you and have my back straight. Uh -huh. And, you know, the, the attack went on and on. And I was like, yeah, I got nothing to say to that. I don't really. <laughs> I was like, it's fine. <laughs> but it was like, if you're going to confront me in public, I will. And maybe that was the difference between that and the the one-on-one -on -one situation. If it's one-on-one, -on -one, there's no audience reading oh, the that's body what I was language. Gonna, that's what I was going to ask you is how much of the anxiety, fear came from the fact that there's that, that you're in public, that there's other people viewing what's happening. Is there is there a definitely sense definitely contributes? Uh -huh. um, definitely does. So then, is it a is it a is it a concern or a curiosity about what other people are thinking of this or how they're seeing you in this light? Is it something like that, like? you know, the being seen part versus the one-on-one -on -one part? Um, you know, it's like all that, all those considerations, they sort of blend into uh -huh. one massive emotional, like, <laughs> like a uh, huge energy thing yeah. in those moments. Yeah. And so, I mean, as a, as a p politician, I'm sitting there, um, I, I constantly have to go back to, especially when the emotions go big, go back to why the heck am I here? What, what, why am I in this room at all? And why am I participating in this generally unpleasant experience? And so I go back to that. And like, I have another example, huh. if we can jump to another sure. example. Um, I, uh, I was pushing the, uh, the board to do what's called a community health uh, assessment, um, something I think hospital districts should do every three years, and in some states are required to do every three years at least. And then, um, and we hadn't really done one for like 10 years. Um, and so I was, I was pushing this and I was saying, you know, uh, pointing out, I mean, we care about our community's health. We should be monitoring our community's health in detailed ways, in rigorous <laughs> ways. And, you know, I mean, uh, a commissioner took real offense at me saying this because it sounded I mean, he took it personally. He was like, are you saying we don't care about our community? And he was, he was really offended. And he, um, he was like, uh, he, he like, just like, just really sort of, you know, I can't remember his exact, exact words, but it's on audio. We could always but find it. But he was at you. Yeah, he was like really upset. He's like, I'm really offended that you keep on talking like you're the only one here that cares about our community. And, he, you know, he sort of went on a little rant like that. And it was a direct, you know, and so I really had to sort of like, it wasn't really um, like an attack insult, but it was like, uh, but it was, um, directed but it was you. directed at me. It was a, it was a very emotional critique of my behavior in that moment and how I was presenting myself. And so in that moment, I, uh, I, I softened and I thought, how do I, I mean, how do I respond to that? And I had to really sort of go back to why am I here? And I remembered, you know, sort of the thing, um, the speak from the heart, you know, thing that is sort of, it's sort of, I think for me, I guess that's my solution to conflict is speak from the heart. Um, and so I was like, I said to him, um, and this was, this was actually, uh, this was Chuck Russell, who's not on the board anymore. Great guy. Um, but I said to, I said, uh, Chuck, I am, uh, I'm here cause I care about our community. I am just trying to figure out the best way that we can care for our community. That is all I'm doing. I'm not trying, to, I'm not trying to criticize you. I'm not trying to criticize what you're doing, but I am going to keep asking questions and suggest things. And I'm, so, I'm sorry if I'm going to turn over rocks that you feel you've already looked under, but I feel like that's the only way I can do this job. And, and it was, you know, and after the meeting, we how, did like, he, how did he respond to that? It was, it was good. It mm -hmm. was, it, it softened the moment. And after the meeting we had, I think we even hugged or shook hands or something after the meeting. Um, yeah. So that, that, that's another, and I, it sounds like that's kind of similar, the, the sort of the empathy thing. How do you, how do you sort of relate your, your, what a tactic you would recommend? Is it similar to the speak from the heart, the, the, the using empathy in the moment? Yeah. Uh, well, sh 
Yes and no. Uh, I mean, speak from the heart is is too is too vague for me to mm -hmm. really know what that you know to really do anything with that. So um, there's two pieces to this. One is recognizing that his criticisms of you, uh, depending on I'd have to hear some of the phrases, but you know if he's saying you're this or you're that or or that's you know absurd. Why would you even you know? Those are sort of like I see those as red flags uh, for empathy. So it's like if someone is so they're abstractions. These are these you know something being absurd or some somebody being an idiot or somebody being selfish or I mean those are just abstract concepts that we overlay on people and behaviors and whatever we like or don't like. Uh, so what number one is to dis to me you can just uh, it's like you don't tune out what he's saying but you tune out what it means in terms of. Um, is this really criticism? No, it's his. It's the only way he knows how. And most people are in this boat. You know, it's, most people only know how to express what's important to them by criticizing what they don't like. So my question to him, mm -hmm. when he says, "Don't think you're the only one that gives a damn about the community," what I'm, what I would wonder is, or let me ask you this: What do you think he is? wanting if he's asking you that if he's saying you're not the only one you know so what do you think he needs if he's asking that quite or if he's saying that to you do you have a sense of, of <clears throat> it my guess my guess to him would be like are you wanting some acknowledgement that oh, everyone here is here because they care about the community and his answer might have been well, yes. I mean, what do you think? Why do you think I'm on this board? Of course I care. You know, so now he's agreeing with you. He's saying yes, yes. And he's being heard in a way that he himself didn't even know how to articulate that. He didn't mm -hmm. know how to say, you know, Matt, I'd really appreciate some acknowledgement of all the other stuff that we do here as board commissioners, you know. Instead, he's saying, you're not, the, you know. So if you, if, if you take that at face value, you're going to get anxiety and and fear and or whatever and you're going to figure out how to defend yourself or explain yourself yeah. whereas if you realize that the really it can't actually be about me he's trying to tell me his experience of it's so frustrating to hear you make these suggestions matt i feel frustration because i want acknowledgement and recognition of all the stuff that we are doing to try to help the community so that so that's what i would hear that yeah. probably there's something like that behind what he's saying. So I could dismiss the criticism, be curious about what needs he's trying to express, and then asking. And even if I don't ask, just the curiosity is de-escalating. Yeah. For me, yeah. it's calming. But then if I ask him, it starts to become de-escalating for him. Right. And I mean, I've literally watched, I mean, countless times I've watched people who are all pumped up over something, and then me or somebody else asks them a couple of questions, and it's literally the energy goes from, but yeah, and all of a sudden it goes to this, yes, yes, thank you, yes. That fast, you know, almost that fast. Hmm. Uh, just by asking those kinds of, being curious about what's driving this person's discomfort. So I think it depends. Um, I mean, it would work, ex I think it would work extremely differently depending on the type of uh, confrontation moment we're talking about. Because, um, that was a moment with a person who was um, wasn't trying to use power over me. Mm. Was really actually expressing strong emotion of how yeah. he was feeling um, in that moment. Um, the other examples, you know, really were sort of blatant. I want things to go the way I want them to go, and I'm angry that you're getting in my way. You're right. creating an obstacle, right. and I am going to raise my voice to try to get you to just understand I know more than you and just do it my way. Uh -huh. And that's a, um, that's a different type of situation. Um, it is. And, and, and if, uh, I mean, I still, I've watched, I've watched, you know, I, my, one of my favorite situation or stories, memories was working in the prison and there was a, a very bulked up guy who was very angry about something that what was happening between him and the administration and not being able to get personal items or something whatever and he was on the edge of his seat leaning towards me i mean he he was just like you have no idea and he was just so you know but and this i was a, a member of administration in the prison no 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 this was a, this was a prison this was a prison yeah this was this was a guy yeah it's the medium maximum security prison out um out near cq 
And so I was working with him with with a group, but then it came to his, you know, he had something he wanted to talk about. And so the more he talked, explaining the situation, the more pumped up and angry he got. And I was literally like, kind of look like leaning, looking down the hall, like how how far away is that guard? Yeah, you didn't have a guard in the room. No, <laughs> and um, and uh, and and so, he, but I just kept asking him questions. I was literally like thinking, wow, this might be the difference between you. Know, I really need, to, I really want to de-escalate this energy because it was like wow, and um, and I just kept asking him questions, and he eventually, you know, pretty quickly fell back in his chair, you know, with relief, because he was like, yes, exactly, that would be really nice, yes, yes, so, so that kind of energy, I've watched it just scale right down, if you don't try to come against it, or explain, or defend, or fight back, or, you know, whatever it is, just curiosity about, is it this, are you upset because you want respect, are you needing, you know, understanding, or, you know, there's something you're needing, and if I ask you, it's, it's going to engage you trying to figure out well, well yeah well what the hell is it that I'm, what is it you know when you talk about this huge ball it all kind of comes together it's big big emotion if you if you watch that over time and i know you practice mindfulness so it's just really tracking that and being careful to say okay well there's this element this component of this emotion that's maybe i'm a little nervous uh because i appreciate calm and i'm getting a little irritated because i like respect and I'm a little fearful because I want to be seen accurately as standing up what's for what's important to me. And there's a bunch of other people in the room, and I'm, you know, you see what I'm saying? So you tie sort of different threads of your emotions to different needs that are driving that whole big thing. Um, in the moment when it happens, and I don't know if I'm unusual about this. I'm a very emotional person. Um, it's just like all the needles go to max. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm just like at max yes. at everything, and. <laughs> I'm like, um, I do try to breathe. It was interesting. We, we had a, uh, another confrontation. This was in Chelan, um, where we had a meeting and they weren't expecting me to uh, record the meeting. Um, and they weren't planning on recording the meeting. And I took out a recorder once the meeting started. And everyone got incredibly upset with me and started to tell me to turn it off and in very, you know, very bossy sort of ways like no you're not recording this meeting and and then giving their arguments why and, and after they all sort of like had their first sort of salvo of no you're not going to do this turn that off I the I mean off the charts emotions inside although I don't really show it on the outside I just yeah, but I um, just breathe and you can actually listen to this audio of this and I don't say anything for I mean it had to be at least 30 seconds to a minute of, of just silence and um, I'm sitting there like wow, I wonder how long I could go with just like <laughs> in this moment of silence and, and they're all waiting for you to respond uh -huh. and they uh, they couldn't you know wait for they couldn't wait you know after about a minute you know the president of the board was like Matt or Commissioner Reddy do you um, you know what you know are you gonna turn it off but um, for me that was the most um, that was the most bold I've ever been with uh, just like I need to take care of my emotions at this moment uh -huh. and I need to wait and so I'm just gonna wait and you know I know it's everyone in the room is feeling this is strange because <laughs> that's not what you do right, you're not allowed right. to be silent right in a board meeting right. for you know unless you're having like a moment of silence yeah right you can't you don't do moments of silence I mean most, oh, you're on your own <laughs> yeah but um but I was very I was actually very proud of myself just for that just for that personal being practice. being aware enough to take care of yourself and being and willing being, to do that in a space yeah. that's not I mean it took it really took bravery for me to be silent that long right you know um, I don't yeah uh, so that was like a personal like accomplishment, just being, just stretching the silence because it did help me. I, I mean, my emotions they did they stayed like off the scales, and once I started speaking, they went, you know, they responded and it went off the charts again. But you know, it's kind of like I look at it like skiing, like um, skiing down a hill. If you know you can stop on any sort of slope, then you know you can like just get stopped and like go a little further and stop. And that's how sure. I see sort of mindfulness uh -huh. for myself when my emotions go out of control. It's like I, I proved to myself in that moment I can stop. 
gotcha. at any point in this gotcha. like emotion. And so it's like, all right, here I'm gonna speak. I'm gonna get into the the whirlwind of the what's going on in this room again. Trying not to feed it. Trying right. to speak. Trying right. to de-escalate it, but at the same time de-escalating myself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you, you're talking about a lot of the, 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 the things that are a lot of the, a lot of these things are why I said earlier that uh, it's to me one of the most cutting edge parts of this whole thing is when you ha are in a meeting because you're being there. Side a minute gone is a minute lost in a meeting. Yeah. yeah. Now, unless you're willing to go over, which you know over over time over the at the scheduled ending of the meeting, which I really don't like doing if at all possible. I really try to keep things contained and keep the agreements we made about the meeting. Uh, but that's why it's so cutting edge is because you can't really dismiss a Matt Reddy who is got to sit for a minute because he can't really function right now, you know, but, yeah. the, but the meeting's got to go on also. So how do you balance those things? How do you provide empathy for people in real time in a meeting situation that's on a clock that involves a bunch of other people, you know, that have made an agreement about how this is going to happen and now something not on the agenda is happening and is peeling away time. So yeah. I just find that to be really challenging. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how's our time doing? Yeah, so we have, it's five minutes, but why don't we check in on the comments? There have been a couple comments oh, right on, on Facebook, cool. and we'll just cool. see I'm what... so glad you're monitoring all the technology. All right, actually, there's I'm been in, one I'm comment. Impressed. Sandy Herschelman, powerful. Um, Alex, addressing your personal examples of conflict and offering some tips to smooth the conversations. So I, I guess that's not really a question, just sort of a comment that she found here. Um, and, okay, so that's the, uh, that's the comment we have. And I don't know if there's comments on, I seriously doubt there's any comments on YouTube. And uh, Rosanna, Rosanna, Rosanna is still in our meeting. I don't know how well uh, she's hearing things, um, but she's still there. So um, let's see, so we got five minutes to go. Um, what, is there anything else we, we wanna like uh, tap into? Uh, before we conclude this, uh, we, we, we've just sort of delved into some really interesting, juicy uh, topics. And I feel it was kind of like a, almost like a great public, personal, political therapy uh, session <laughs> for me. <laughs> nice. It'd be good to debrief like every meeting, you know, with you. Like sure, this, totally. But, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, it's, it's interesting. I, uh, this is, after Occupy and after I left Port Townsend four years ago, uh, I went uh, I went to Florida and thought I was going to hang out with a friend and write a book. And, I, and I've been working on the book, but that, but I didn't realize um, I, 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 I still had work to do to figure out what to focus on. And in the end, what I decided, because my, my focus originally or, or ultimately became how can I blend the empathy work and the consent decision making work into one model so that one person can buy one book and read one theory that's written in all one language and one glossary consistently lays out everything from self-care to empathy to group dynamics, decision making, the whole nine yards. How, you know, and, and it's fascinating. I, I would like to do that one day. But, but I realized in that time that, that the, the, the core piece of empathy, which I was sort of doing with you, like, like dismissing the criticisms and the evaluations and aiming at what needs are driving this, and that, that's, that simple shift is incredibly transformational. And people don't have to know much about it. They don't have to see it or do it very much to see, whoa. And I just decided I want to start off by focusing on getting that piece to as many people as possible rather than the whole entire piece to the few clients I might find who want to take the whole thing from beginning to end, yeah. starting from scratch. Yeah. So that's my so my so it's fun for me to go into this because I, I I don't pay that as much attention to the group dynamics and and consent decision making as I used to. Yeah. Uh, but it was a nice mix too. Like yeah. I said, the sort of the, the cutting edge, the the intersection of the two. Well, I mean, I really feel like uh, the world, the, the 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 way power works in our world is extremely broken. Um, and uh, corrupt. And the solution to that is going to involve um, uh, a lot of people with the type of expertise and skills and passion that you have. Um, I mean, I kind of felt this way like during the Occupy movement. I'm a, facilitators, people that have facilitation skills, 
um, but not just facilitation skills. It's the other piece of that. It's sort of like the vibes checker skills, like the group empathy and the skills for how to um, how to help a group when conflict arises. I mean, uh, I mean, I feel like people like you are incredibly valuable to human society right now. When we don't know, I don't think society knows how to use these skills yet. We don't really have. Um, I mean, when you have a hierarchy, you don't really need people uh, all that much that help make people happier in the process. Right. You just need people to follow orders. Right. But when you have, um, when you really have a more egalitarian society, uh, when everyone's needs and emotions are important, not just the needs and emotions of the people at top, uh, you need some serious uh, healing power, some like uh, mindful Zen power in intermix teaching people this is really teaching everyone this is the skill you use um, and this is this is how you train it and this is how you um, these are tools you can learn and practice totally so thank you for the work you do um, thank you for you know everything that you taught me when we've been uh, when we work together and we continue I continue to learn from you from these conversations um, you're welcome, Matt. I, you're really welcome, and, th and uh, thank you for what you're doing because I'm really appreciating now what you're pulling together and what you're working on these different levels and different channels for putting it out there and, and the Hive Hive One. It's very exciting. I had I had an idea for the same type of idea a few years ago, and you're you're doing it. So awesome. Yeah. All right, and I hope you, you. I hope you. Thank you, and I hope you'll come back and join us. I'd uh, love to. And uh, if we do get a, you know, some big uh, events going on Hive One, I. Uh, would be very interesting having you helping me uh, figure out how to facilitate. Yeah, I'd love to work with it. Awesome. Yeah. All right, uh, that is the conclusion of the fifth episode of The Mindful Activist. Thank you, anyone that watches or dropped in and watched. Um, and we'll see you next time. So, thanks. <laughs> very cool. And we will finish ending and we will stop that and we will post that wow how come uh, does that obviously that phone doesn't do landscape mode that's not yeah it was it oh. was doing landscape oh, okay. but uh, oh, yeah so it always does um it's just when you canceled out of the bam 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 yeah i think that should have worked and then we can stop that all right and then the right. top one is is film is just recording everything. Yes, uh -huh. that and that's technically still recording. Uh -huh. Ro Rosanna, do you do you want to say anything? I I'm not sure if that's uh, Rosanna, the one, the Rosanna I know. Let's see if Rosanna says anything. All right, Rosanna, we're gonna end the meeting. Is there anything you'd like to say to us? <laughs> All right, that was so. So she can hear. I think so. Well, she was listening to the microphone from this, which is pretty. Oh, wait. I wasn't listening here. Rosanna, are you speaking now? Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> There's a chance she was speaking, and it was like coming out of this uh, computer. And it looked like this one is just the battery's dying, is the only problem with this one. Yeah, it like it dropped off of you now. Uh, you now can play. But it's the battery itself that's. It just didn't have power all, I mean also just running out of power yeah maybe that's what dropped it out it was it was too low I'll have it fully charged when we do it next time okay so thanks Rosanna um, gonna end this meeting and